uh, an interactive drawing show here on Adobe Live where our goal is to come together to doodle, relax, learn a little bit about a different aspect of drawing every week and hang out with a guest illustrator. Um, I'm your host, Alice. I am an illustrator and a muralist based in the SF Bay area. Um, and it's you know so great to see everyone back. If you're joining us live, please feel free to say hi in the chat. Um, you know, it's already great to see some familiar faces like Sam and Jessica. And if you're new to the stream, um, basically the way this works is Doodle Therapy is here on Adobe Live every other week. And um, every time that we're on, we bring on a special guest artist to learn from and delve into a illustration related topic with and, uh, you know, learn something new about drawing every week. So this week, um, please join me in welcoming my friend and fellow illustrator, Daniel Fischel. Welcome, Daniel. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, it's great to have you on. Um, we're going to get to introducing Daniel in just a second, but I'm also really excited for our stream theme this week, which is self-promotion for illustrators. And it's something that Daniel and I have talked about um, quite a bit because actually the way that we uh, like met each other is uh, through Daniel's mentorship program that I was able to do when I first started out as an illustrator. So uh, it's a really interesting and hot topic, I think, for a lot of illustrators. And I'm excited to catch up with Daniel and hear his perspective and approach to promotion. And if you guys have any questions, you can feel free to ask us in the chat as well. Um, and so for today's um, doodle prompt, we are going to be creating a promotional postcard together. Um, as we introduce Daniel in the next couple of minutes, if you want to draw along with us, um, you can feel free to download the um, doodle uh, therapy template, which is in the description below and just get that all set up. It's available as a PSD as well as PNG. And if you don't know what a promotional postcard is, um, we will explain in just a little bit. It's a uh, approach to uh, promoting yourself as an illustrator. And um, just as a reminder, you know, if you're watching the stream, regardless of your skill level or age, you are totally invited to draw along with us and we would love to see your drawings as well. So Daniel, I'm going to head over here to um, your, uh, some of your work here on the screen. Do you mind telling us a little bit about yourself, what you're about? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And basically introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is, as you already mentioned, Daniel Fischel. Uh, my uh, website and my Instagram handle is official. Uh, it's not because I'm Irish or anything. It's because uh, <laughs> I love a good, I, I love a good pun. And uh, I, I thought it'd be like a really funny way to kind of put myself out there. Um, so uh, I, I started off, uh, well, way before I started off as an illustrator, I, I, I grew up in central Pennsylvania. Uh, and my mom told me after my last band broke up that, you know, you had to go to college for something. She didn't care what. She just wanted me to kind of like pursue something. And I decided, what's the most punk rock thing to do than spend a lot of money going to an expensive art school? So uh, I went to art school and I went to grad school. And after grad school, um, I ended up uh, going from screen printing uh, promotional posters for, uh, you know, local Philadelphia, you know, bands and concerts and everything like that and doing uh, album artwork to eventually doing my bread and butter today, which is editorial illustration, as well as, you know, working on big ad campaigns and book covers and uh, like a side project of creating my own like t-shirt designs and selling them online and along with a bunch of other products that I have like prints and uh, gator masks and, and things like that. And I feel like in the next month or two, I'm going to be releasing uh, by like round two of like new designs and a few mm -hmm. other things that I have kind of mixed up. Uh, I'm thinking about making like one or two like coffee mugs or it's 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 all cooking in the background right now um but yeah i i, I really the one thing i have to say uh, about creating my own products versus working for other people is that i actually personally work way better when someone gives me a prompt to work with and i start to 
uh, mold that versus me trying to come up with something creative. So actually having t-shirts and other kind of products that I'm trying to make is a new challenge for myself to do something that is not someone giving me something to draw, but some, but something for me to kind of have a little bit more authorship into. And that's been a lot of fun uh, over the last year, like kind of developing things for everything. And I, I have friends that like actually put out new stuff like every other month uh, for this kind of thing. And that's just not how I roll. And I'm just too busy to do that kind of thing. So it's cool to kind of have it something in the background while you have some time to kind of, build and kind of mold yeah. a little bit on like the the cooler uh kind of like promotional things and editorial client work that we do kind of on a day-to-day yeah and we can get to that discussing that in mm-hmm. a second um because i feel like the topic of like what's the balance of like client and like self-initiated work what's mm-hmm. the cadence that i should be posting on social media and all that like mm-hmm. i feel like those are things that people think of ask themselves often um so it's kind of interesting to hear your outlook on it um and if you are joining us um i just want to say welcome into everyone to um jeffrey dowd as well as jeffrey lynn uh to tim um to axel uh as well as to sam and jessica it's great to see everyone uh, if you're joining us live, please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat, share your name, where you're joining us from. It's always interesting to hear. And um, we always have a random question of the day. So my random question of the day, because we're talking about self-promotion and putting yourself out there as an illustrator, um, my random question of the day is, what is the most like random and unexpected way that you were able to get a project like the most I feel like as illustrators you know sometimes we just get projects like from the most random sources and they end up being like kind of interesting the most sometimes the most interesting and like creative fulfilling um, projects that you get to work on so I'm interested to hear like you know some random places that people have gotten to get some opportunities to draw um yeah Daniel do you mind sharing uh you know your answers to those questions like where you're joining us from and the most random well, place you got I, an opportunity. Yeah, I mean, it, it's such a weird thing to get an opportunity from, but I live in New York, so it seems kind of incestuous in a way that this would happen. But, you know, when you, you know, I, I'm, I'm seeing someone now, but when I wasn't, I was on Tinder dates and Hinge dates and, and all that. I, I ended up dating someone and it didn't really work out, but we remained friends and it was okay. And uh, they ended up recommended me to, you know, do like an editorial assignment for a publication that they had a friend that needed someone to illustrate something for. And I ended up doing the job and it was fine. (laughs) It's such a funny way to kind of like go and be like, we're not really a a match for love, but you know, I have a friend who needs an illustrator. So your stuff's amazing. And I'm like, (laughs) that's awesome. That's a fun opportunity. And that was yeah. very unexpected. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So your uh, most random way that you got an illustration job was through yeah. your Tinder connection. That's awesome. Who, who um, would have knew that swiping right would mean I would also make, you know, a couple hundred bucks on an editorial. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it didn't mean it didn't lead to love, but it led to no led to money, a drawing. Yeah, <laughs> drawing collaboration. Um, exactly. Yeah, I'd love to hear, you know, if anyone else you know has some stories of random way they got uh, a job um, would love to hear. I feel like, uh, you know, sometimes we just get these opportunities from the most interesting connections. For me, um, you know, just to introduce myself, if you haven't seen the show before, I'm my name is Alice. I'm based in San Francisco and probably the most random uh, introduction to a company that I've had is uh, for was for Adobe. I actually met some folks who worked at Adobe at a like eight to 9 a.m. sticker making workshop in San Francisco. And that led to me, um, you know, jumping on one of the Adobe live streams when all the way back when it was on on Twitch still and not on like Behance. Um, And then that's led to a lot of really cool opportunities of like getting to meet cool, cool artists, getting to collaborate with Adobe team. So I have that, you know, 8 a.m. sticker making workshop to thank for that. (laughs) I just wanted to make some free stickers, so. Yeah. Um, so that kind of segues, you know, pretty nicely into our 
topic for today, which is um, all about promoting yourself as an illustrator. Um, Daniel and I can go over this in a second, but one way that um, you can promote yourself, you know, especially if you're starting out in like editorial industry or advertising in some cases, or I think even like publishing possibly, um, is to create a promotional postcard. So um, the template that I have in the description is of a uh, postcard. If you open it up in Photoshop, you'll see a front area where you can put your artwork and a back area where you can, you know, design it and format it, you know, in a way that works with the postal service. Um, I also have some postcards that I have created from, you know, like four, four or five years ago. I actually created this with Daniel's mentorship in Daniel's mentorship program, sent this out. Uh, I got like two magazine covers from that. And then I also sent this one out, um, you know, several, I think a year later, uh, this is the back. And I got to work with the Washington Post uh, on a section cover off of this. And those are the only jobs that these postcards led to, but I think that it was well worth it to send out postcards to art directors. So we can talk about that and, you know, how you can use these tools like this to just put yourself out there um, in some specific ways uh, as well. But Daniel, just starting off, like, do you mind uh, sharing, you know, your approach to actually first before we jump into that, um, maybe do you mind sharing like what you're going to be working on today? Yeah, uh, I am working on a uh, old sketch from um, uh, a piece that I worked on for the New York Times on traveling during COVID. Uh, I feel like things right now, it, it feels re really appropriate to kind of, you know, draw another piece on the topic. It feels really apt. So I feel like I need to kind of approach that in, you know, in, 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 a, in a different way, in a fun way. Yeah, uh, got it. That's cool. So. Um, and for me, uh, I just wanted to show how uh, simple it can be to create your own postcard, especially off of existing work that you've already created. So for example, this is my postcard template. And if you download it, um, you know, this is what you'll see. Um, and so you can literally just pull like artwork that you've already created. So I'll just pull this a uh, mural that I did for Autodesk last year and, you know, format it well to fit the template and, uh, you know, just add a couple of design touches in there. Um, and boom, you've got yourself a promotional postcard that you can mail out to art directors um, and just get your work like directly in front of people. Um, so what we're going to be doing today is creating artwork for the purpose of sending out a promotional postcard um, like Daniel described you know he's working on an old sketch of his and I will be creating um, a postcard that's more aimed for a kid lit audience because that's sort of a direction that I want to go in, in the future so to that end I've also created a little sketch that uh, we'll probably spend the first 10 or so minutes just like refining these um, you know before jumping into final color uh, does that sound about, uh, you know, right to you, Daniel? That sounds good. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. For, for uh, mine, um, I want to, you know, just reach out more to like ki a kid, a children's publishing, um, audience. So I was just coming up with this idea of like this girl character and this like tiger who's sort of a part of like the forest that she's in, um, some feedback that I've gotten from um, folks in the like kid lit scene, like some critical feedback has been mm -hmm. to introduce a greater sense of like character design in my work. Um, so, which makes a lot of sense. So, you know, I just, I'm going to be fleshing out this character a little bit and that's what we're working on. If you would like to draw along, you're totally invited to, and I would love to see, uh, you know, your postcards that you end up making. You can tag me and Daniel in the postcards that you end up making. I'm at by Alice Lee and Daniel is at O underscore official. So without, uh, with, you know, with that, you know, covered, Daniel, do you mind telling us a little bit about like how you got started? Um, how you like first like built, built up the career that you have when you 
right. first graduated and you didn't, you know, you obviously had not much in terms of like your illustration reputation and portfolio, at least compared to what you have today. Like, how did you, how did you even approach, approach that? Right. Uh, before, before we go on, I want to mention um, that my screen is not changing on your end. I can see it's just a little, a little oh. technical glitch. Oh, I see. Um, yes. All right. Uh, I see. So Sorry, I wanted to maybe, mention that. Yeah, maybe we'll figure that out. Um, if you wouldn't mind. Re yeah, sure. I can re uh, re stop share and reshare. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure why that's not working. And then I've just put up my 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 uh, sketch, and then we'll get that worked out on the back end. But um, yeah, as you do that, would you mind? Yeah, um, I don't mind kind of sharing a little bit. Oh, cool! Now it's all set up. Yeah, uh, awesome. cool. Uh, so how I got started? So when I was in grad school, uh, I was taught by Marshall Erisman, who had this philosophy that, um, you know, you'll never feel ready. Uh, so you might as well get started. You know, if you have mm. the portfolio and you have everything kind of, you know, going for you already, just take the leap in that every, basically every assignment that you work on, um, is going to be, um, Uh, you know, hold on a second. Uh, every assignment that you work on is basically going to be someone paying you to basically, you know, work on yourself is basically um, the hot topic there, which is fun. That's interesting. Yeah. Work, working on yourself as an artist. Mm hmm. OK. Um, so, yeah, I, I took that to heart and. I started to, you know, make my own work. And again, I started off in the space of being an illustrator who did show posters and kind of did these like, kind of like odd, kind of poetic, like sense of artwork and spending the time to really hone in my skills and to figure out, you know, what I wanted to say and how I wanted to say it, uh, it was, you know, really worth the time to really take that all into account. Yeah. Um, how did you get your first, if you just think back to like your first like five mm -hmm. paid client opportunities, how did you get in the door for those? Yeah. So what I did was I did what a lot of my professors told me to do in art school, which was go to Barnes and Noble or Borders or whatever, you know, bookstore that was there that basically has um, like a bunch of magazines and find the magazines that you feel like has um, something that feels like you would work for or kind of fits your art style and has stories that, you know, you want to tell. And from there, um, you would go and you would have a you know a, like a binder of paper and you would write down their the names the addresses and all the contact information and the address and everything so that you know when you went home you would then put it into a spreadsheet um on the computer and that would basically be your list of art directors that you would work with um, interesting which you know today you would basically just go on LinkedIn or you would um, go on, um, uh, you know, the website of the like publication, Twitter? depending Twitter. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah. If you just literally type in art director on in the search bar, you get like a ton of different people, <laughs> which is like pretty cool that, um, that that's so accessible in a way. Yeah. Um, um, do you feel so? Do you would you recommend that same thing to artists today, or do you think that uh, the digital equivalent is like sufficient now? Uh yeah. I think that I think that it's important to take a look at magazines. 
uh, still, just so you can kind of get a sense of the look and the feel of what you're looking at. But I don't think that you need to painstakingly go to like uh, a magazine rack and um, just like no write down names and stuff. Yeah, yeah. like some sometimes I will do that. Um, like I'll, I'll be like on a, like an Amtrak train or something like that. And, uh, I'll be like, Oh, this is cool. Like they have a magazine and then I'll write down the information from that. And, um, that's, you know, what I'll use for that. Or I'll just take a photo of the actual masthead and then I'll fill it in later whenever I get back home from, from a trip. Uh, I see. yeah, that's, that's basically it. Yeah. I mean, something that, so basically for context, the way that me and Daniel met and became friends is, uh, Daniel used to have a mentorship program where he would like every, I think, was it a quarter or half year? You would like mentor a couple of illustrators and we would like meet every week, Mm -hmm. uh, over, over Skype. And then Daniel would give me assignments. And then by the end of it, um, I had produced maybe like 10 pieces, but, but only like one that I like ended up putting it in my portfolio because I was experimenting a lot. Uh, but that ended up being, you know, this postcard that I that I have here and, uh, you know, put into my portfolio. And um, yeah, so that was a really formative mentorship for me because um, that came at a time after, right after I would quit my full-time job and was trying to go um, freelance. So um, yeah, I'm just curious, like, One thing we've talked about before as well is like the difference between these um, passive promotional tactics as well as um, the very direct tactic of sending postcards. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. now when you look at your like body of work and your promotional like outlook and perspective, like how do you how would you describe the way that you reach out to uh, clients or the way that clients find out about find out about your work? I think the return on investment when it comes to my promotional efforts is kind of all over the place. Um, There's no one way that I feel like is that like reigns supreme in terms of like, uh, I can like pinpoint that it's like the most successful. Um, But I can like kind of give examples of different kind of uh, things that kind of happen by kind of breaking down the difference between um, like passive, indirect, and direct way of promotion. And I think yeah, like, you that's know- Yeah, so interesting. Yeah, let, let's, let's talk today about um, passive and indirect uh, ways of promotion. Um, Sounds great. Yeah. And if, so, if folks have questions about it, like especially if you're starting out, um, or trying to break into the industry, feel free to ask because I even I feel like I'm going to learn learn a little bit. I don't really feel like I uh, think strategically enough about this. So yeah, really excited to hear your thoughts. Oh yeah. Um. So let's talk about uh, passive approaches. So I want to say about half the time, passive approaches are things that you have some control of. And the other times it it isn't. Uh, For instance, um, the times that it hasn't been uh, something that's been in my control, but it's been kind of interesting is when you actually have someone write about your work and you've never had any contact with them before. Uh, Like for instance, for instance, I've had a couple of times where someone has written about my uh, web store and said, oh, okay. Hey, like, you know, uh, support black owned businesses. Here's a list of like black owned online businesses of like artists and this and that. And I've been on a couple of those and I've made a little bit of money from someone buying things from me online that way. And that's been, yeah. you know, really nice and surprising, uh, uh, like thing to happen. Uh, yeah. That's great because it's also uh, good for SEO too. Right. Exactly. The, the link back. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
And then you have articles that you actually reach out to people and have them write about you. So for instance, mm. uh, when I, well, let me give some concrete examples and then give you some hypothetical examples. Yeah. Uh, so in 2012, my, my friend John and I had a gallery show in Philadelphia and we wanted to create a bunch of buzz online. So what we did was we emailed every single blog uh, in existence that we can think of to have write about our art show. So we had juxtapose and we had boom and a bunch of other blogs, uh, write about our art show, having never seen most of our art or anything. They just liked our websites. They liked the stuff that we're doing and we're excited to write about stuff. And I think that they were also just starved for content. So, they were I like, see. yeah, like, we'll, we'll write about your, your show. Like, why not? Um, okay. So, you know, uh, that, you know, led to John selling some paintings and me, uh, not selling paintings. I, I just don't sell paintings that well. Uh, John, John has a better, uh, sense of selling his gallery work than I do. And that's, that's not a big deal for me. I, 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 I have my lane here. A question, question is, you know, on that topic, as you yeah. create mm -hmm. artwork for these shows um, and on the topic of self-promotion, do you mm -hmm. ever let the idea of what will be commercially well-received get in your head in terms of like what you end up creating? Or how do you balance balance that when it comes to like, since you, you work in a commercial illustration space, but you also do these art shows, which are, I guess, more like yeah. fine arty. Yeah, I mean, when you look at my paintings, they feel like a poetic sense of what my work would be. Um, they feel like an extension of my illustration work. They don't feel completely divorced from uh, that at all. So in a way, it's, it's kind of similar. I'm just kind of exploring themes that I would normally explore. Um, which is fine. Um, okay. Let me, see. Uh, let me see here. Kind of organizing my my layers and the layer groups. Uh <laughs> cool. Yeah, we can't actually Kendall. see the layers. So if you want to pull them in, to, if you're trying to demonstrate something. Oh, yeah. Pull it on to the side. Okay. So those are, that's kind of like the distinction between dire direct promotion and passive promotion. I think you also well, mentioned I, I, indirect. I, I mean, there. I mean, there's a there's a little bit more into passive promotion too as well. Okay. So I mean, there, so there's like things you can do, and then there's just things that I feel like until you've made some headway into like doing some work, you can't really like, for instance, like being uh, you know brought onto a podcast or a live stream or something. Uh, like those are things that like it it takes a while to get there. But also, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't just do it yourself and do it. Like, um, I, have a, I have my, uh, let me see if I can bring up her name quick. Michelle Condorich, is, I think is her name. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I like her. <clears throat> yeah, she, she has a, a podcast that she created because she became a parent and she's an illustrator and she wanted to talk to other illustrators who are also parents. And so instead of kind of waiting for some kind of podcast to come together or uh, to exist, she decided, hey, I'm just gonna just create my own thing. And she ended up creating uh, the Creative Playdate where she talks to illustrators um, of all identifying genders and talking to them about like balancing life and children and how they, you know, get work done and it doesn't so i guess it's a long way of me saying you don't have to wait until you know you get on like some podcast or something you could do what i did years ago which is like i created a blog called illustration confidential uh something that me and my friend uh pete ryan created and we illust and we interviewed illustrators and art directors that we liked and we um, put it on a, a blog spot, which was um, 
the uh, actual blog engine that we used at the time. And the, the medium we, of our time. Yeah, the, the medium of our time. And we posted our, it online. Of our generation. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, of our generation. Yeah. And yeah, uh, that's, that was, that was that's awesome. awesome. So basically, all passive is doing is you're just, you're, you're either having some control or little control of things that are like active and online so that you can um, have people interact with it and know you from that and they can then see your work and so forth. And I think that people kind of doing that and putting things on YouTube and now the expansion of people going onto TikTok and it's just <laughs> so, so fun. Like all the different opportunities yeah. that one could actually do. Yeah. I think of um, a lot of what I do for posting my work on the internet to actually not really be um, direct promotion, but a form of passive mm -hmm. promotion because Oftentimes when I get a project with a client, especially if it's like a, mm -hmm. a pretty big brand company, um, mm -hmm. I'll ask the art director, like, how did you find out about my work? And usually it'll be like, you know, we found out through Pinterest or mm -hmm. I, I like saw your thing on Instagram like a long time ago and I just like saved it. And so I think of these things as like little seeds that you're planting and, mm -hmm. um, you know, over time they, they sprout. It's just that you don't see it when, when you plant them. Um, exactly. Yeah. And I want to say hi to Felix who is joining in the chat. Good evening to you. Um, and Sam, uh, our wonderful mod wants to know how much weight do you put into promotion through social media versus contacting or reaching out to companies or clients directly? Right. That's a good question. Um, I, when it comes to social media, I'm more of a macro poster than a, someone who mixes micro and macro post posts. So, uh, what I a mean by that, poster. okay. Yes. So what that means is that I literally only post projects. I don't post doodles. I don't post, oh. I, I, you know, there are people like that are also cartoonists that have a slew of um, just like, you know, comics pages that they can kind of turn to for like, you know, additional content, content yeah. and stuff. And Interesting. they can basically just uh, pull from that and just have like another vehicle to kind of... Um, you know, be a thing for, which is awesome. Um, but I, I just don't do that at all, which, you know, is unfortunate. Um, why, why is that? Well, like, I why think not it's just post because, your sketch? well, uh, I think it's just the kind of quality control that I'm trying to set up with my work. Um, I feel like I have am such an aggressive finisher instead of someone that has good quality sketches that they post all the time or doodles oh, or just quick thoughts and ideas. Um, yeah. I feel like, um, you know, there are other people that are way better at approaching th that kind of, uh, you know, constructing of ideas. Uh, you know, which is fine. It's, it's a way of, uh, doing things, but, um, it's just not the way that I handle myself personally. Yeah, that makes sense. I think I'm, I'm very mm -hmm. similar. Um, I just really like the aesthetic of having all of my like high quality finished pieces on Instagram and, and even Twitter. Um, so while that does have a downside of like, I think, I think that when you post more, it just naturally tends to grow your audience more. And there's a whole like nuance of quality and stuff, but quantity is definitely like a good way to grow your audience just with like the algorithm and whatever. But, um, I really like to just look back on my feed and have it be like very representative of the work that I want to do. So it is harder for me to post, um, in progress types of work. Um, Lizette from, from the rainy Netherlands says that this show is so relaxing after a long day of work. Thanks Lizette. And let us know if you have any 
questions about promotion or anything that we're we are uh, talking about. Um, so Daniel, I'm curious about the second part of Sam's question, which is, have you had experience in reaching out directly to companies that, you know, were just on your like dream list of, you know, top collaborator that you want to work with? And what's been your experience? Mm -hmm. Like, have you gotten to work with any of these companies? Has it primarily not led to stuff? I'm just curious what, what your experience I, I is. And I, I also have an interesting story mm -hmm. as well about that, about this. Yeah, I, I feel like I am all over the place when it comes to this question. Um, you know, I reach out to people all of the time. I feel like at least, cool. you know, you know, a couple of times a week, I spend a day in the morning just kind of drafting emails and sending emails to people saying, hey, this is who I am. This is what I do. Uh, I would love to talk to you about, you know, what I can do for you. Or if not, then maybe we can just kind of like, you can just, if you have a couple of minutes, you can just take a look at my work and kind of just leave it at that. You know, Nothing is it wrong usually an email or a postcard? Um, and what do you send them to? Do you send mm -hmm. them to your like website or particular project? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. So, uh, I usually send them to my website, um, typically, and I keep my emails very short and sweet, um, just because, um, you know, they probably have a lot of emails from their boss and their editors or their art buyers or whoever they're dealing with. So I just try to just keep it simple and not, uh, worry them too much. Um, so, I have had some successes when it comes to, you know, reaching out to people directly, you know, magazines and newspapers, especially. Um, oh, cool. I've gotten, okay. yeah, I've gotten, I've gotten like, you know, in-person portfolio reviews, um, oh, which has been, you know, really nice. Um, yeah, they, what, they, what are, they, they actually exist. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what are the types of companies that would offer a, an in-person portfolio review? Like, can I do that? Um, can I like email someone at Starbucks and be like, portfolio review? Or is that weird? <laughs> you know, like, um, how do you know what is appropriate mm -hmm. to ask? Well, a lot of uh, traditional publications, so like magazines, newspapers, and book publishers will have make time to actually meet you in person and, um, talk to you about your book idea or talk to you about, um, you know, uh, about your portfolio, especially if you're someone that is just starting, um, oh, okay. you have that edge. Another thing too, is you have an edge if you don't live in the city that you're meeting them in and say, oh, okay. Hey, like I, in your, like a week or two away from like going and visiting that city and being like, Hey, like I'm actually going to be in this city. And I really want to work with you and meet you and, and, and talk with you. Would you like to schedule a meeting? And then you schedule that up and, um, you know, make it happen. And it's fun. Um, I think that the one thing that has evolved since I was a student uh, in a young professional to now is that, um, you know, switching from... Uh, a printed portfolio to um, oh. now having an iPad, which is the oh, way to go. Okay. Yeah, I've yeah. never had a printed portfolio, but I've also not taken a very traditional route, I think. Uh, slash didn't live in a place that had a lot of mm -hmm. art direct traditional uh, mm -hmm. media. That's very interesting. Thanks for sharing all of these pieces of wisdom. Um, yeah. So, bef you know, before the stream, you were also sharing a lot of wisdom around a poll that you just conducted on your oh, yeah. uh, social media about reaching out to art directors. Do you mind mm -hmm. like sharing some insights that you have there? Yeah, sure. Um, so I, I posted on Twitter and, you know, so far there hasn't been a lot of people um, replying to it. But so far um, I asked what days of the week is best to send a cold email or a solicited slash unsolicited newsletter to art directors? And Ooh, okay. 
Yeah, and uh, the answer so far is most people want them on uh, Mondays, Tuesdays, or Wednesdays, and not a lot of people want them on Thursdays and Fridays. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Because they're and wrapping our, up for the weekend, or? Well, yeah, so I know, so an art director from the Washington Post, who's someone that I work with a lot, he actually uh, mentioned that, you know, Mondays are typically a day that they're just kind of getting back into the slog of everything and that yeah. they're basically putting out fires and talking to various people that, you know, do various things. Um, they're also uh, just kind of figuring things out. And then Tuesdays and Wednesdays, they're like starting to, you know, get things ready for the rest of the week. And so, um, you know, they are more interested in seeing promotions on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Um, mm. And then Thursdays and Fridays, they are kind of going full steam ahead and trying to uh, basically get everything ready for the weekend and get that all figured out before they kind of like wrap up which is pretty cool um very interesting um yeah. i also want to say welcome in to uh christina young uh oh who says that they are having a hot day lol it's 102 <laughs> and it's also from queens new york so she says represent oh, wow. um yeah uh, and so we're talking about the ideal times to reach out to art directors as informed by Daniel's poll that he just did on social media. Um, that's very interesting. I think, so for me, like I haven't really taken a very strategic approach to this sort of thing at all. Um, the only the level of strategy that I'll take with promotion is like, usually I'm writing these emails late at night. So I'll just set up my, uh, I'll schedule the message to be sent at like, like 6 a.m. Pacific time or something, which is like uh, 9 Eastern time, instead of, you know, 12 a.m., which is when I'm writing them. That's like the limit of my professionalism um, with with respect to email. So I'm that's very interesting about the timing of emails. Like I, um, I've been working on this project with my friend uh, to create this satin bomber jacket, which I've got on right now. It's a little preview. Um, and, um, we were talking about ideal times to share it. I wanted to share it with like coinciding with like the full moon. <laughs> so uh, not a very <laughs> precise, uh, you know, it was just based off of like my feelings. And she mentioned that it's better to share things on, um, Monday mornings, which I <laughs> hadn't very much considered in the past. Um, so that's, uh, in, in terms of social media, that's an interesting piece of insight. And I also recently learned from seven, several different people that it's much better when you post on social media to not share a link in the main, uh, tweet, for example, that you're tweeting, because apparently the algorithm will, uh, suppress tweets, uh, that have external links. Um, so it's better to like tweet your thing and then like post the link as a follow-up, uh, which I also thought was very interesting. And so this is the level of uh, thought that one can put into uh, promotion on the internet. That is completely new to me. I didn't know that. Yeah, I was like, oh man, I only post links. Like whenever I sh uh, put tweet about this, uh, this stream, I always <laughs> used to post the link in the tweet. Uh, and now I have learned to put it second, so. That's very interesting. Uh, one, interesting uh, one like indirect way that I use Twitter is uh, every couple months I will post a few images uh, from my like recently updated portfolio and I will put a little blurb about myself, uh, the kind of work that I do and what I'm interested in working on. And uh, yeah, and then I post that. And then every time I get a new assignment, I just add it as like a thread item. And it just becomes this oh, thing I where see. 
people will see like, oh, I'm looking for work, but also here's this new thing. And then I just continue to get retweets and likes and retweets from people uh, that I follow and I don't follow. And that is something that um, has been really helpful for me as well. Yeah, I have a question for you. So um, you, as well as others who are watching this stream right now may have seen if you're active on Twitter that sometimes art directors will post like general calls like I'm looking for an illustrator and for this uh header image on my website or I'm looking for an illustrator who can draw um dragons for my thing or I'm looking for an illustrator who can do travel illustrations for my travel website and I'm curious what uh what your opinion is of those types of open calls, because um, I think I have a very mixed feeling about them. I think on one hand, mm -hmm. it's great that people who normally might not be able to get on an art director's radar can have this like seemingly direct access to, you know, an art director by tweeting back at them. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I also think um, sometimes I feel like weird about it or like icky in a way. And um, diving into that feeling, I think it's because it's almost like that the art director is being like bombarded and I would much prefer that they uh, reach out or something to specific um, illustrators instead of like having it seem like a, a power imbalance or something. So I'm curious like what right. you think of those and if that, if that has ever worked for you um, and yeah, what, what you think. So literally the book cover you posted as a preview of my work, uh, the uncomfortable conversations with a black boy, I think is what the cover title is. That is yes, a result right of me, me. replying. That is, uh, that is the result of me actually replying to a tweet from the art director at McMullen saying, Hey, I'm available. Wow. Um, you know, <clears throat> and it, it paid like slightly above like what I thought, what I, what I got paid for like another book cover that I did for, another pub, like another like big four publication like you know, place so i was like kind of surprised Great job um yeah and uh i've gotten a couple editorial assignments from those uh calls so i think that you know i also feel in a really particular way like on, on my one hand i feel like it's good because that way they're not always hiring Right, same the people. Fifth, that they just the same people that they know that's like always like in the bubble of New York Society of Illustrators kind of world. And that people that are active online, they see the retweet, they can mention it. And it doesn't matter if you're the first person to reply or the 700th, you're somewhere right. on their radar and they'll go through all that and they'll put you in a spreadsheet of like, people they really like and they'll eventually call you for the right job. I don't know if I'm going to get another book project with uh, that art director anytime soon, but it was really cool to like do that. And um, it like adds to my book uh, portfolio yeah, that I starting up. So yeah, I'm, I'm very much for it, but it has a, re uh, I mean, I have to read this thread about it to kind of, have all the right words about it but um it's really similar to if i remember correctly like a labor practice that was done in the uh you know in the industrial revolution time where um you know they would hire people and kind of do a cattle call being like who can do this job yeah uh, we'll, we'll pay you like you know two cents uh, an hour this is like you know before yeah. like minimum wage and all that. And, you know, people would go and work for starvation wages and stuff. And, you know, this type of practice basically led to the minimum wage um, where like companies could no longer just, you know, hire people for willy nilly, which is really cool. Um, yeah, I think that's my weird feeling about it is mm -hmm. um, I can totally see the benefits. Like I actually, for one of my, um, I probably like highest profile projects, um, I painted a mural with the Asian Art Museum like two years ago. Um, oh, cool. And I got I got that because my the curator posted on Facebook, like, does anyone know cool female Bay Area based art, 
muralists. And then my friend like put my name down and um, that's how I got connected to her. So that's like the one time it's worked out. But mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes when I see art directors consistently doing it and then there's like hundreds of replies, um, I feel a way and I'm not quite sure how to put it into words, but I feel like there's a power imbalance that is um, it's kind of like, oh, you should be like tripping over yourself to, um, you know, work with me. Like you, whereas I think that you should, there, I, I would hope that there's a way that illustrators can put their work forward, but, um, it feels like you're more like equals, I guess. And I guess it's just weird. Cause you can just see yeah. everyone else putting them forward. Th those are my weird ideas, but, but um, no, you know, I, we're, all, we're I, reaching, I, sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. We've got five minutes left in this stream. Um, mm -hmm. So I just want or four minutes. So I just want to sort of um, maybe wrap up this conversation and we'll touch back uh, in on it tomorrow and just kind of ch uh, check out what we ended up uh, drawing for our postcards. So do you kind of mind uh, doing a high level kind of recap and sorry to cut you off, cut you off there. No worries. Yeah. Uh, a high level recap is that, you know, we talked about passive ways of promoting yourself, which is everything from just being existing on the internet and having people write about you to reaching out to people to write about you, um, to if, if you're not someone that is well known enough to be put on a podcast or a live stream like this. Just do it yourself and start interviewing people and bringing it and actually making that kind of work happen for you. Uh, yeah. We talked, yeah, we talked about indirect ways of actually, we kind of started to touch upon indirect ways of promoting, which is posting on Twitter, posting on Instagram. We haven't really got too much into the weeds, but I imagine we can kind of dovetail that into a little bit next uh, tomorrow. Uh, as we continue yeah. our conversation. Um, um, and in terms and, of your artwork, it looks like you got pretty far with the painting. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I've been mostly just kind of drawing with shapes, kind of outlining things, because I think um, my my Cintiq, because I moved it upstairs for the stream, is being a little funky. But I can work it out and have it for tomorrow so I can actually draw into it. No, cool. no worries. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, on my end, I've also, you know, started working on my postcard. I've got this scene of this girl with her like forest tiger that I am mm. hoping to make it kind of kid, kid litty and um, send it to potential like agents or um, publishers. And uh, tomorrow we'll be back at the same time. We're back on a little bit earlier at 2.30 um, and we'll chat more about promotion. Um, we can talk more about like direct ways of promotion. And if you have questions, like I see some great comments in the chat actually from Uriel about, you know, um, doing their I, Instagram as a grid format. And then like Lizette asking about separate accounts for your personal life and your work. That's a great question. Ooh. I would love to hear Daniel's thoughts on this and maybe we can chat about it tomorrow. Um, so sorry to end this, end this on a cliffhanger. Um, but also if you end up watching this after the stream, like not live and you have questions, or if you end up creating a postcard that you are going to send out to art directors or other potential clients, feel free to share them. You can tag me on Instagram, Twitter, Behance at by Alice Lee. And you can also tag Daniel at O underscore official. Um, and it's always great to see everyone's, um, you know, illustrations and doodles. It makes my day. So, uh, yeah, that kind of wraps up our day one stream. I definitely learned a lot. So thanks Daniel for, you know, sharing all of your wisdom. Um, and I can't wait to be back and chat with all of you, uh, tomorrow at the same time. Bye. Have a great afternoon. Take care.